Hey guys, it's Dr. Jamie Richards here from Life by Design Center. I'm going to show you today how to set up your at-home workstation or an at-work workstation. I know today in the climate we have right now, it's very common to be working from home. And questions that I get on a regular basis from my patients and people contacting us are, how should my workstation be set up in order to maximize the health of my spine, to minimize uh, injuries to minimize things like lower back pain, headaches, musculoskeletal disorders. How do we make sure everything's set up to get the most out of our workstation? So I want to walk you through where the monitor should be, what we need to do with our chairs. I'm going to talk about whether we should be sitting at a workstation, whether we should have a stand-up workstation, all the things that you need to know. Let's get right into it. Number one, monitor height. Where should the monitor be? Now, these all apply whether I'm talking about an, an at-home workstation or I'm talking about being at uh, you know, a, a business or in a corporate setting. It's the same principle. So uh, also, same if I'm talking about sitting or if I'm talking about standing. So when we look at the monitor height, the monitor should be placed so it is at, your eyes are at the top of the monitor, okay? So you can imagine if I was standing, then we need to elevate this. It either needs to go on a shelf or we need to create some type of standing situation, stacking up books, maybe less ideal. But we want our eyes, to be at the top of the monitor height. Number two, we need to look at the distance. So if we're working with one monitor, uh, minimum 18 inches away, upwards of you know whatever distance you're able to still visually see what's on the screen, but 18 inches away is a great starting point. Uh, you don't wanna be right up in front of the monitor staring at the screen. So we've got our 18 inches away. What about the mouse? What about the keyboard? Where should that be? Well, I'm right-handed, so I've got the mouse and keyboard to the right side, and forward, okay? So I brought them forward so I'm not reaching out, so my arms aren't extended, which is gonna lead me to a collapsing posture, right? With that head going forward, shoulders forward, so we're looking at, uh, you know, really the, the, the postural distortion we see all the time, and structural distortion with people who are living the desk life. If you're living the desk life, and it's super common these days, and I just think in general, We've got to do everything to put ourselves in a position where that's not going to be um, a damaging factor to our bodies and really impact our health. So we'll be to the right if I'm right-handed, and I'm going to bring that forward so I'm not reaching out very far. And again, you may have some type of rest that, that is altered based on your wrist angles, but for me, the simple version here is I've got it towards the front and I've got it towards the right. Things that I'm going to use on a regular basis. And again, if I'm going stand-up workstation, then this needs to be elevated as well. I want to make sure all the things I need regularly, so pens, uh, paper clips, stapler, whatever I use, coffee cup, of course. Uh, I want to make sure all the things that I use on a regular basis are within arm's length. So I'm not constantly reaching, um, leaning, bending. It's all right there. The things that I'm going to use on a day in and day out basis, multiple times a day, multiple times in an hour are all right there. Now, when I talk about the chair, this is one of the things that I think is, um, I think it's wrong, really. And I, I think that a lot of people assume that they should have a chair with crazy support. You know, you get the big lumbar backrest. And I'll tell you what's worked best for me and what I think is actually optimal. And that's to have a chair that you really don't use the back of the chair. So we're not actually leaning back and hanging out and relaxing, okay? The chair and the design for me, is to sit forward on the chair. So you can see here, the back of the chair is away from my spine, okay? And I'm forced to actually use the spinal muscles. And you might say, well, but I get tired, I get fatigued. Yeah, that's the point. The spinal muscles are weak. And so in your body, you need to, number one, you need to strengthen those muscles. That should be a, a big indicator that if you have to sit, then, uh, you know, there's a problem there. Number two is when we sit, we tip our pelvis, so our pelvis gets tipped into an anterior position, and we do a pelvic tilt. We flatten out the lumbar spine, and so instead of having an arc in the lumbar spine, we tilt the pelvis, and then the lumbar spine is flat, and it puts the weight of gravity coming down on a lumbar spine that instead of having a curvature in it, and remember, the curves of your spine are purposeful, they act as a spring, so they, they create a cushioning effect. When we tilt the pelvis, then what happens is we flatten the lumbar spine and the forces of gravity, and of course we're sitting all day, those are pressing down on the discs and they're creating major, major problems. And so I like the idea of, one, keeping my back and my spine away from the back of the chair so I'm forced to use my spinal muscles. And two, I wanna get up out of my chair on a regular basis. Now, 
This leads me to the idea of standing versus not standing. What's better? And there's, there's a, a real, I don't want to call it a fad with the standing desks and people are excited about those, but if you look at some of the research that started to come out comparing standing versus sitting, the real difference here is actually not in the standing versus sitting. People assume, well, if I have a standing desk and that's better, you would assume that. And I think that would be the intuitive uh, belief and, and I would have thought that too. But the best research says that it's the movement that comes along with the standing desk. So if you have a sitting station, home or at the office, and you don't move and you sit in that station consistently, hour upon hour upon hour, and you have a standing station, you stand at that station hour upon hour upon hour, you're actually going to have around the same impact because you're not moving. So the benefit to a standing desk, to really get the benefit out of it, is to get up and move. So if you don't have a standing desk, you can still get up and move. And so what are some of the principles we can use? Well, we could use a timer. So you could set a timer on your phone and then just go ahead every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, somewhere in that range, set a timer, get up and walk around. Uh, make sure you have to get up and do things like go to the printer or you know go grab a drink or go uh, you know just go for a walk and take a break. Those are the kind of things that will actually have a bigger effect on the spine and a bigger effect on the structure and mitigating some of those stressors. So workstation, take home, monitor at eye height, uh, chair. Let's not use the back of the chair. Let's use our spinal muscles and make them strong. If we are going standing, bring the desk up, uh, bring the monitor up so it's the same height. Put your keyboard closer to you, okay? And together with the mouse, and then again, making sure that things that you need are in a close approximation to uh, you so you don't have to be reaching and tugging and, and putting those extra stresses on your spine. So I hope that helps. I know you're working at home or you're working at the office either way, or whether you're standing or sitting, the principles are the same and it's going to help you really reduce some of those major negative effects from living the desk life. I'm Dr. Jamie Richards from the Life by Design Center. Make it a great day.